five, four, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff. You're listening to Working Forward. Presented by Symmetra. In partnership with NASA Reimagine. In this limited podcast series, hosted by Harry Monty, Laura Dynan Haber, Paul Tyler, and Todd Zen, we explore the future of work from a variety of viewpoints and discuss the challenges and opportunities ahead. Hello and welcome into the Working Forward podcast. My name is Todd Zen. I am one of your hosts and we are extremely excited that you've joined us as we continue to talk about all things future of work. Our topic today is mental health at the workplace. And I have to say, in preparation for this episode, I went back and listened to some of our recordings and looked at some of our past questions. And, you know, I was amazed to see that mental health came up either directly or indirectly in every single one of our previous discussions. So I think that this is a fantastic subject for us to dig into. We've got two excellent guests that I am excited to bring on, and I will do so in just one moment. Uh, But before I do, I want to introduce our co-hosts. First, starting with Harry Monty. Harry, as you know, is the head of our benefits division here at Symmetra. But what you may not know about Harry is he also serves as Symmetra's mental health awareness champion. So this is a obviously very personal topic to him, this subject of the podcast today. So first of all, welcome, Harry. And second of all, perhaps you could share with our audience uh, your passion around this subject. Yeah, thanks, Todd. I appreciate the introduction and uh, looking forward to the discussion today. Um, yeah, you know, as far as being the um, mental health awareness champion for the company, you know, I would say that Symmetra has always been a company that's focused on mental health and mental well-being. Um, but like so many things that we've talked about in this podcast during the pandemic, uh, the need to focus on that certainly accelerated. And so I got involved in our efforts um, probably about two to three years ago uh, to be the champion of uh, really making sure that everyone in the organization was aware of the mental health challenges and the tools uh, that we have available to, to help folks and really kind of, quite frankly, to break the stigma, right? And I think we'll talk about that a little bit today. Um, and I will say that on a personal front, you know, just um, every one of us, you know, our lives have been touched by someone that has had some form of mental health challenge. And uh, I know my life certainly has been, so I think it's just um, behold on all of us to do everything we can to support our, our fellow human beings. Wonderful. Well, thanks, Harry. Um, so we also have our friends, or the just friend this time from NASA Reimagine. Unfortunately, Paul Tyler is unable to join us, but thrilled that we do have Laura Dine and Haber. Laura, hello. Welcome to the show. Todd, it's great to be back. I'm excited to be here with all of you today. And as Harry mentioned, it's such an important conversation. We're looking forward to uh, jumping right in. Excellent. Well, those are our hosts. So let's pivot now to introducing our guests. So our first guest is Ellen Stone. Uh, She joins us from Symmetra. She's a colleague of Harry and I's, and she is a senior manager of employee benefits here with the company. And, you know, I'm thrilled to say that um, Harry and I and our teams are direct beneficiaries of the great work that Ellen does in designing benefit packages for Symmetra employees. So, so thrilled to have her part of this discussion. Ellen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be here. Excellent. Um, And joining Ellen as well, we have Karen Wasserman. And Karen joins us from Lyra Health, which is a company that is on the front lines doing things to help people from a mental health perspective. So Karen, if you wouldn't mind giving us a little background on Lyra and also talk a little bit about your role at the company and what you do there. Yeah, absolutely. So Lyra is our uh, leader in workforce mental health and provides evidence-based mental health care to employees across many different types of organizations. And my role in particular is that I oversee uh, our organizational development function um, on our workforce transformation team. And I'll talk more about what that looks like, but um, the gist is that I really help organizations think about how they can improve employee well-being and mental health through the way that they design work 
and through the way that they're thinking about systems and processes of the work itself. So where Lyra is um, providing an individual mental health benefit through therapy and coaching, um, it also is uh, providing its customers support through thinking about how they can uh, really be thinking about the way that work impacts employee well-being and mental health. Excellent. Well, thank you both. Welcome to the show. We're thrilled to have you. And we do have some questions for you. So, Harry, why don't you get us started? Yeah, I'll jump in with the first question, Todd. Thanks. Uh, Yeah, I, I mentioned in the introduction that the need for supporting mental health is more important today than it ever was, right? It's always been important, but um, with the pandemic, it's become an even more prevalent issue in the United States. And I'd love to hear from both of you, what are some of the things that you think employers should be doing to make sure that mental well-being uh, is remaining a priority today, but also as we think about tomorrow and how things are changing in the workforce? So yeah, Ellen, why don't I start with you? Sure. Thanks, Harry. Um, And thank you for being the leader for our mental health imperatives here at Symmetra. Because frankly, it is imperative to build a culture where destigmatizing mental health is a priority and where getting mental health care is a sign of strength and not weakness. This requires clear and consistent messaging, um, regularly communicating that it's um, important to address mental health. All of our employees need to address mental health needs that they have. And it's uh, incredibly important to have senior leaders uh, back up that messaging for us and be the face of the message for us. Um, we, as I'm, as other employers are doing, are just trying to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, COVID, I think, got us a, a little fast forwarded in terms of uh, really moving to delivery systems uh, that can meet people where they are. And so we just uh, strive to provide um, messaging about the tools and the care options that we have. And then I think it's also incredibly important to back up all of that with supporting employees when they need to take the time to get away and get care, whether that's an hour at an appointment or whether they have something that's more pressing, that needs a more significant time of way, a time away. And I think it's also incredibly important to partner with carriers and vendors who provide a culturally responsive approach to supporting people across a wide uh, range of benefit needs, cultural backgrounds and abilities. And um, we're doing our best to try and, like I said, stay a little bit ahead of this curve. And I hope we're we're doing that. Kara, do you want to add to that? Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, just kind of building off of what Alan um, was saying, you know, it's great that um, Symmetra is really thinking about all the ways it can be very innovative and proactive and offering employees uh, culturally responsive mental health care, thinking about a uh, provider that will support diverse needs and um, something that, you know, at Lyra, we're really thinking about, as I kind of alluded to in my introduction, is the importance of thinking about supporting individuals in, through mental health benefits, as well as thinking about employee um, mental health and well-being through the context of the employee experience. And so what we're starting to see both as a trend um, across the mental mental health industry, as well as something that more and more customers are needing and asking for is the ability to measure how work is impacting the employee experience and how work is impacting mental health and really taking a very proactive approach to making sure that uh, the work itself isn't furthering any employee mental health distress that folks are experiencing in order to uh, make sure that work isn't the cause of employees really needing additional support uh, outside of the workplace. You know, it's great to hear from both of you the the care and the thought that's being placed around 
the care itself, not only how it's administered, but meeting people where they are is another thing that's come up a lot in these conversations. And to almost take us a, a tiny step backwards, um, it'd be great to hear from both of you, you know, what, what type of mental health and well-being benefits are commonly being offered throughout the workplace benefits today? And then what might be on the newer side? There's some folks who I'm sure have a, a mindset of these are the benefits as they know them, but there may have been some evolution um, in technology or just uh, other, th- other factors that have taken place since the pandemic that may be newer. So Ellen, let's start with you. Sure. I mean, obviously our health plan is was um, the p- pivotal point for how employees would access mental health benefits. And I think traditionally that was more face-to-face. And as I mentioned, during COVID, it became really imperative to make sure that we had text-based offering, video offerings, we have a specific program for that's designed specifically for children. Um, but on top of those offerings offered through the health plan, it's really important to offer other kinds of programs to help employees navigate life's complexity. Um, and so we um, have a num- number of companion programs that we um, have launched over the last three years. Um, obviously, this current year, we transitioned to Lyra ourselves, and our employees are really benefiting in in a couple of ways. Uh, First of all, it was very um, difficult. I think everyone was having trouble finding a mental health care provider that was accepting new patients. And our former EAP was not um, immune to that. (laughs) We, We were just really struggling. So as we move to Lyra, that gives us, on top of our medical plan, another source and resource for employees to seek um, mental health care. And what's really nice about their program is they have, and I'm sure that Karen can speak to this further, but they offer what they call a blended care approach. Um, So our employees have up to 12 visits per year that they can access, and that's for all employees, not just our benefits-eligible employees. Every employee at Symmetric can access this program at no cost to them. And this blended care model combines video therapy sessions with personalized between-session provider support and digital activities that sort of continue the healing, if we want to call it that, um, and, and maybe accelerate um, how long it might take for somebody to work through a situation that they're dealing with. Um, but I still, on top of that, don't think mental health counseling is even enough. So we've, uh, early on in the pandemic, we offered, we began to offer a caregiver support program. We knew uh right away that it was going to be (laughs) very difficult for employees to be sitting at home working maybe across the table from their child who was also home from school and um, be able to juggle all of those things. So we added a caregiver support program in March of 2020 that is one of my absolute favorite benefits that we offer. And I think a lot of employees would mirror that. We have pretty high utilization with that program. Um, it really just is there so that if someone is struggling with anything, if they're giving care to a child, an adult themselves, and they need to, um, focus on work or their family, and they need someone who's expert at providing them with, um, going out and sourcing, um, services and things that they might need, or, uh, just be able to, um, provide them, you know, peace of mind that they're, they have someone in their corner to help them get through things. That program has been a huge, big win for us. And then this year, we also add a new program that is a family support program. And it's a digital platform that provides coaching, education, and support for all pathways to and through parenthood. So literally from the moment Starting a family is a twinkle in someone's eye until they (laughs) go all the way through and they're dealing with menopause. Uh, It is there for all those kinds of things. Again, that's a free program. um, There's no cost and unlimited services. So all of those kinds of structures are, I think, helping to build a big, 
bigger uh, picture of what we as an employer can do to support our employees. That's tremendous. Karen, did you want to add anything to, to the commentary there, especially about the blended model? Well, I think Alan covered it really well. Um, I'll just share that, you know, definitely the the pandemic shaped the need for virtual care. And I think something Lyra does really, really well is just offer a seamless experience for employees um, and their ability to log onto the platform and get matched with a provider, something that uh, in the past has caused a lot of heartache in terms of just trying to figure out the right provider to find um, and making sure there are options available, especially, um, you know, within the right locality and time zone and all of those, um, you know, important things. So uh, I think that has definitely um, evolved and is really a norm now that employees are expecting to be able to really use their benefit um, and, and find a provider that meets their needs. So I think that's been really great. Um, and then kind of, again, building off of Alan in a different direction is it's that we're seeing now this, um, shift. So if we think about both benefits in terms of the individual benefit that folks are experiencing, but also kind of what's offered in house throughout the workday, um, something that I really love that that we do is offer workshops um, and small facilitated led gatherings um, to help employees process kind of world events that have come their way. And the reason that I mentioned things like workshops or these small facilitated events like gatherings is because mental health is being now discussed in the workplace more and more. And um, the destigmatization process that comes alongside just having more and more conversations about mental health and well-being at work is so important so that employees feel comfortable utilizing their mental health benefit. And so I think that shift in and of itself, bringing mental health into regular discussions in the workplace is new and something that we're seeing more and more of over time. I love that we're talking so much about employee experience. I think it's so important and essential to, um, you know, the employee's workday and their productivity and just their mental, just their overall well-being. And, you know, I think the other thing that, that's come up a lot in our conversation from the employer perspective is the challenge associated with retaining employees and the importance to the business. So I'm wondering if um, maybe, Karen, starting with you, um, you know, obviously there's a lot that, that you provide at Lyra Health. And it, it, it's it's clearly valuable, but I'm wondering, have you studied or dug into it, how it might impact an, an employee's desire to, to stay with a company, any sort of retention angle to your offerings? Yeah, absolutely. So I think we can um, talk about retention in two ways. So the first is an employee's desire to stay with their organization. So when benefit leaders are thinking about the benefits package that they offer, really making sure that employees' needs are met. And as Ellen was talking about earlier, um, how important it is for employees to have a mental health benefit that they can use, that they can use for free, that they can use repetitively over time, right? Like seeing somebody just three, four times is not going to really help them solve a problem, but 12 sessions really gives somebody an opportunity to build a relationship um, and dig into a life challenge that um, needs, you know, some ongoing support. So just from the perspective of attracting and retaining talent from purely a benefit standpoint, then there's another piece of retention, which is, are your employees healthy enough to come to work day to day? And this part is really interesting to me because um, employees are retained sometimes, are not retained sometimes by their choice because they desire a different kind of experience or different different perks and benefits, sometimes they have leave of absences due to their own health. And we know that mental health is so closely tied to a variety of physical health outcomes. Um, everything from hypertension and diabetes and cardiovascular conditions are all really wrapped up in employees' mental health. And so as employers and as benefits leaders think about the importance of a mental health benefit, I think it's important to consider 
one, you know, how is this meeting kind of the demand? But then also, how are you helping keep your employees healthy so that they aren't taking those leaves of absences and so that you have um, employees showing up at work and, and, you know, kind of preventing high levels of absenteeism um, due to illness? Yeah, that that's a, that makes a lot of sense. I've I've also heard a lot about presenteeism when it comes to mental health, meaning, yeah. you know, maybe you're well enough to show up to work, but you know, how how able are you to perform your task because of some of these challenges? So that that makes a lot of sense. Um Ellen, I'd love your perspective from a from a Symmetra standpoint. I, obviously Symmetra offers a lot and and does a lot. I assume this impacts retention and and attraction of employees, but what what's your perspective on this one? I totally agree. Uh, you know, one thing that I'm really proud about working at Symmetra is that we, although we're approaching 2,500 employees, we like people, our employees, to feel like we're a small company. And so it's not just about the programs that we offer. Just as important as the relationship that we have with our employees, where we build upon that relationship with trust and transparency so they're comfortable talking to us. And honestly, from the first week of employment, employees uh, sit through a, well, I shouldn't say sit through, they engage in a two-hour benefits orientation session, where if they're too shy to ask questions, somebody else surely will. Um, We go over every single one of our benefits programs and help them enroll. And we often hear this is the first time this has ever happened to them, especially at a larger employer. Um, But I mean, frankly, we're um, the point of contact. Oftentimes when employees are at their lowest point, they may be struggling with news of a serious health condition, the loss of a family member, et cetera. And they know we're here to support them. And I think, like I said, in addition to offering great programs, being there to help employees understand what's available to them, remind them of the amazing benefits we have, uh, being open to having them reach out to us, which we encourage them to do with questions, suggestions, concerns. Um, And it's really the best way to know what employees need and what they want. So that's worked really well for us. And, you know, we've, with the a growing number of um, employer resource groups or ERGs at Symmetra, we are, are able to hear from different groups with different backgrounds. They're very comfortable sharing with us what they want and need. And on top of that, um, they're a great way for us to communicate. So w- those partnerships have really helped us. And I th- and it's really fun to sit in on some of the meetings and hear people say, oh, you should try Lyra. It's a, an amazing program. I've used it and it's great. And so a lot of that open communication, I think, um, is a huge, big win for us as well, too. You know, I think you both just, um, you both raised points that I think are critically important for us to underscore here that it's, this isn't just about check the box. I have mental health, mental wellness benefits, right? This is, everything kind of stitches together, right? Karen brought up physical health. Uh, physical health can dramatically impact mental health. Um, you know, Ellen, you talked about uh, really the, the culture and the work environment and um, how important the way that people lead in an organization is and, and the trust that's developed. So um, it all stitches together and it's all important. I, I appreciate both of you raising those points. Yeah, absolutely. And as we dive in, you know, I want to kind of go a little deeper there. And as we discussed in prior episodes, there is a trend towards working from home. And you mentioned earlier in your comments, you may have a, a, a child across the table from you. I know in the beginning of the pandemic, we were recording a podcast episode and my son was home at that point. And, you know, at that time he was four and change and he took his Hot Wheel car and he's driving it up my arm and I'm trying to act like nothing's <laughs> happening, but we're on video. And I look back at that episode awesome. and it's it's hysterical in a, in a number of ways and how far we've come. But as as we continue to work from home or hybrid in a lot of cases, I know that there's still a feeling that can be, uh, you know, experience of isolation and the challenges that come with the balance um, and the feeling of, you know, we're together, we're apart. How is this new reality coming together? So the feelings and the concerns that employees may have, do you find that they're being effectively managed through these mental health offerings by employers? And, you know, are there any specific 
examples. I know we've talked a little bit about this already in the episode, but are there specific examples of offerings or services you found to be particularly effective when assisting with these feelings of isolation that one could get from working at home? Karen, I guess we'll start with you this time. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, Gosh, yes. So, you know, I think employee experiences of work from home span a wide spectrum where a lot of an employee's experience will have to do with their job, their, their role itself, not just their location. So we know that some employees love working from home. They love the flexibility of working from home, um, the ability to, you know, kind of juggle their work, their personal needs with their work needs is actually really positive and contributes to a positive sense of well-being and mental health. And then we know for some employees, they feel very isolated as a result of um, working from home. And so I think what even this example underscores is that there's a very diverse employee experience happening underneath a lot of these kind of themes that organizations will see. And what organizations are often missing is kind of that contextualized understanding of what is contributing to distress. Um, And so it it, it could be easy to assume that work from home in some cases could be a bad thing, or it could be easy to assume that it's a good thing. And the reality is that leaders simply do not know until they ask the question. And so this is where there's a new program that Lyra offers and really something new that we're seeing across the mental health industry, which is the importance of evaluating organizational health through understanding which work factors are contributing to employee mental health distress. And then not just which work factors are contributing to their distress, but actually teaching leaders how to review results of an organizational health evaluation with their teams to really contextualize, to understand how how the results of the assessment are showing up for their teams and then putting together some kind of action plan around it. And so um, as we're thinking about you know, how do you address something like isolated work? My recommendation to organizations is to evaluate the health of their organization and look at isolated work as one variable, but then also look at other variables like work-life balance. And we know there are over 20 different drivers of burnout. So career development, um, recognition and reward, supervisor support, uh, team and coworker support to really start to have a much more specific understanding of what could be causing um, that distress. Because it might not be the isolated work alone. It could be actually that maybe there's some exclusion happening in the workplace and and you would get much more nuance from from running a thorough evaluation to understand, okay, maybe, maybe it's coworker support. And the intervention for coworker support as a result of maybe exclusion or low psychological safety looks a little bit different than simply isolated work, right? It, um, it requires a different type of conversation to happen. So um, I will share that as something that I um, truly recommend organizations participate in just to get that better understanding of how to address uh, the issues arising for their employees. I appreciate that. I I appreciate hearing the different attributes. And, you know, we could go into this in in an offline discussion, but I'd love to hear those factors of burnout. I didn't realize there was 20, you know, as as employees, there's so many things we experience. (laughs) And, you know, burnout, we all, I'm sure, experience that at some point in our career, but 20 factors, goodness gracious. So Ellen, um, to to kind of piggyback on Karen's commentary there, have have there been any um, examples of of programs or supports that you've seen, um, either specific to the isolation feeling that some employees may have or, or something different within the workplace that you've been hearing a lot about so far? Sure. I mean, honestly, during the pandemic, uh, our CEO spoke to us uh, via a communication every Friday that was not only telling us about the business, but also on a very personal level, encouraging people to get the mental health care that they needed, recognizing the 
things that employees are dealing with and being specific about those, um, telling people to take time off. And that kind of cascaded down to where managers um, did a very good job, I think. And I, I know that's continuing to be empathetic towards employees, um, you know, really evaluate how they're relating during meetings make a pointed example of reaching out to employees or, you know, at least um, having employees express how they're doing in one-on-ones and in group meetings. And I hate to keep going back to it, but those ERGs are, have been just an amazing way for like week. So we have one um, ERG that's dedicated to mental health, um, disability and caregiving. And each week there's a it's about a one hour session where it's just an open forum based on one of those three themes. So they rotate and employees are welcome to come in and hang out for the whole time or a part of the time. And it is a a very safe um, zone for them to be able to chat about it. I step into them. I try not to do it a lot because I want them to speak freely without HR in there. Um, But they're always very welcoming to me. And they're always really quick to say, hey, we're struggling with this, you know, what could you do? And I also want to go back to our caregiver support program. I mean, honestly, it has been one of the most broad benefits you can imagine. It's there to help people if they have physical health issues, they're having trouble with a trouble with a toddler, you know, behavioral things, the need to find an attorney because their ex-spouse is causing a problem for them. They've got a child going to college. Uh, they need assistance about, you know, with an individual education plan at school. You know, maybe their child has special needs. Um, elder care, daycare, end of life planning, LGBTQ support. So it's an amazing solution that we continue to kind of push out to employees and say, you don't know where to turn or you need someone to be in your corner. This is what we have. And of course, we we have our Lyra program, which is wonderful as well. Tons of resources there too. So Ellen, I'm going to take us in a little bit different direction. Um, you know, a couple of times in this discussion, a comment, something along the lines of comfort using the benefits has come up. So let's talk about the stigma around mental health yeah. and with everything that, um, you, with everything that we've tried to do to break the stigma around mental health, are you still seeing folks hesitating to use the benefits? And um, if so, w- what do you think are a few critical components to breaking the stigma? Well, it's interesting. And again, I'll go back to an ERG group I sat in on, and there was a very frank conversation. It was our Afro-Caribbean group. And there was a very um, interesting conversation thread uh, where A gentleman of African-American descent was saying that it's really frowned upon for black males to go get care. That's a sign of weakness. And so, you know, just the fact that that was a conversation thread, we have uh, another group that's dedicated to our Asian population. And, um, you know, that just hearing those kinds of conversations going on makes me feel really good that the stigma is kind of melting away um, and just enlightening other people about one's own um, struggles and things that someone might not have been exposed to or aware of to the same degree is been just really culture building, I think, at Symmetra. I don't, you know, I used to, (laughs) I've been at Symmetra for about 14 years. And when I first came, I do remember being involved in some conversations or going out to lunch and having somebody go, ooh, HR is here. I really don't get that sense anymore. And I mean, frankly, um, like I said, we're so upfront um, with employees in their first week of employment saying, we don't want you to spend more than 15 minutes trying to sort something out with your benefits. We're here. We can step in. We can try and um, resolve an issue, answer a question, um, you know, set you straight if you're confused about something, or again, just even remind people that we've invested a lot in our benefits and would be a shame for them not to take advantage of it. And I think that, you know, building that open, transparent, 
trust with our employees through those kinds of conversations has gone a long way. I love that. I think it's a great example of, of using the ERGs, the employee resource groups, to really open up conversation among peers, but then invite in others to both listen and then to contribute to that conversation. And as you mentioned earlier in the episode, trust and transparency are so important, especially when dealing with an important conversation such as this. Um, so, so speaking of utilization from a broader perspective, we mentioned these groups and, and peers driving conversation, but how do we get more people within organizations to benefit from the programs? Are there specific communication strategies or other engagement tactics that you found to be particularly effective on top of working within those smaller group settings? And Ellen or Karen, I'll, I'll let you either jump in or both. It's totally your call because I'm sure that you both have interesting insights into this. Um, Karen, let's start with you. Great. Um, yeah, so utilization of mental health benefits, you know, is layered because on the one hand, employees need to know that this benefit exists. So I think definitely to your point, Laura, about uh, making sure that you're communicating often with employees so that they know what their benefits are, how to access them and where they go um, is super, super important. And then also making sure that the communications are being sent in ways that employees um, are able to retrieve them and see them. So I think about, you know, lots of employers out there with deskless populations. So how are you, how are they sending, getting word out about benefits? Are there posters in the building? You know, are, are there, you know, just kind of common spaces where people can see promotion, um, of, of the benefits so that they know they exist and what they're about. Um, I think another piece of this is how are leaders talking about utilizing the benefits? Like, are, are there employees kind of modeling the fact that these benefits are so great and really having some organic discussion, kind of weaving it into the way that they're sharing about their own personal lives and connecting with employees, I think is another really beautiful way that, um, more communication is happening around the benefits and kind of normalizing it at the same time. Um, then there are other avenues of mental health destigmatization through the form of education workshops. And as I mentioned, Lyra has gathering. So um, in educating employees about mental health, maybe that's through how to curb burnout or how to increase psychological safety in the workplace or how to cultivate emotional intelligence skills when you bolster employee soft skills and thinking about how they manage um, mental health in the workplace, you are destigmatizing mental health because you're talking about it and normalizing that conversation. You're also able to then weave in, hey, by the way, we have a mental health benefit and remind employees of the opportunity um, that they have to engage in their benefits. So I think they're Definitely a lot of creative avenues um, and really important avenues to genuinely kind of educate and normalize and talk about mental health at work. So I'd like to go back to something Ellen said in uh, answering the question about stigmas and um, dig into it a little bit deeper because I thought it was a really excellent, insightful point about some of the cultural differences that come into play when you think about mental health and, and perhaps even accessing mental health care. And I, I'd love to get both of your perspectives on how do you design mental health programs through a diversity, equity, and inclusion lens? And, you know, how do we, how do we be intentional about making sure everyone can access and benefit from these type of programs equally? I think from this conversation, it's, it's readily apparent how important this is. Um, so how do we dig in and make sure that we are uh, encouraging everyone to access these things in an equal manner, designing them in such a way that they appeal equally across the diverse populations and, and so on. Uh, maybe, Ellen, maybe you could give some thoughts on this. I know this is central to Symmetra's values. Sure. I mean, DEI is a huge initiative for us at Symmetra. It's literally the lens we look at everything we do through. Um, benefits are a big part of that. Um, we want to make sure that people, people have uh, equal access. I mean, from as simple a thing as if you don't have a car, how are you going to get care to 
again, as you mentioned, the cultural differences. So we try to partner with companies who share those same priorities that we do and that have spent a lot of time trying to make sure that uh, the the, uh, providers that are available can help a very diverse uh, set of cultural identities and um, that's that's really come back in a positive way for us. Um, people do feel seen. Uh, they feel like they can connect with somebody that they can relate to, and, and that's huge. Karen, any thoughts on this one from your perspective? Yeah. Um, I, well, first of all, I think it's so important to establish diversity, equity, and inclusion is part of an organization's core values. So the fact that it's so explicit, number one, is is critical. Um, And then I think the importance of listening. And Ellen mentioned attending employee resource groups, establishing uh, employee resource groups. So just making sure that you're keeping a pulse on kind of uh, what's happening at the grassroots with employees. And um, making sure you, you're you hearing from employees directly to understand what their needs are. So whether um, that is kind of mobility, Ellen, as you highlighted with car, you know, mm-hmm. having transportation available, um, I think to something that's come into um, like the line of sight and importance is making sure dependents have access to care as well. If you think about an employee's uh, mental health and well-being. It's very, very difficult to show up fully at work and be well if you know that your family member is not accessing care or or is sick, right? So thinking about how are you taking care of the employee holistically and thinking about all of the different types of needs, whether it's parents and caretakers, different cultures, races, backgrounds, um, to be inclusive and make sure that the provider that you're using is able to meet those needs in a variety of ways. That's great. Uh, This has been an excellent conversation. I think we've covered a lot of ground and and really, I I know personally, I understand the mental health issue in the workplace better just from our conversation. But before we close, I do want to ask my co-hosts if they have any final quick question or any, any thought they might like to add to the conversation. I'll just jump in and say that I appreciate both of your, um, you know, the information that you've shared with us today. I think it's it's great to hear how supportive Symmetra is from an employer standpoint. The benefits that uh, you all are providing are, are remarkable. I think as a, you know, as a employee, not of Symmetra, but just an employee in general, I would jump on those benefits immediately. And and I think that it's amazing. And I applaud you for that. And Karen, I look forward to, you know, learning even more about your company and seeing how we could potentially um, look forward to that in the future, because it's such an important conversation. And this is just the beginning. So it's been a pleasure to, to meet both of you and hear more about what you're doing independently and then how you're partnering together as well. Yeah, thanks. I'll just jump in and uh, say thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Karen. I I think it was just an incredibly important conversation. This has come up repeatedly throughout all of our episodes. Uh, you know, mental health has, has been a theme that has come up. And, um, you know, I, a really good conversation about how this all ties together from the benefits that are provided to the culture that you create, um, meeting people where they are, listening. All these things are really important to making sure that we advance the topic of making sure that people are uh, you know, addressing their their mental health and, and well-being. So truly appreciate your time. Great conversation. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. thanks, Harry. Thanks, Laura. And a very special thank you to, to Ellen and Karen for joining us today. We really enjoyed learning from you, gaining your perspective, and uh, thanks for sharing it with our audience. Uh, that's going to be a wrap for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Please keep an eye on your podcast feed because we will be back with more episodes of the Working Forward podcast soon. Thanks very much. You're listening to Working Forward, Future of Work podcast series.
The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Symmetra Life Insurance Company or its affiliates. The host is not affiliated with Symmetra Life Insurance Company and or any of its affiliates and is solely responsible for the content.